Joey from JLD Travel, finally back with a new reaction video today. And today we're checking out uh, a new video by Filipina P, the myth of the shy Filipina and why Filipinas act the way they do. Uh, without further ado, we'll jump right in. Hi folks, the Filipina P here, telling it like it is. If you've been to the Philippines before, I bet you've been more than a little confused when you ask a Filipina to do what you consider to be a simple thing, like wearing a bikini. And she gives you the famous, I'm too shy. But then 10 minutes later, she's frolicking around your apartment in her birthday suit. Or after explaining how reserved she is, she grabs a microphone and starts singing out of key in front of a hundred other people. What gives? Well, today, I'm gonna bust the myth of the shy Filipina and explain what's really going on in our heads. This should be interesting. Yep, quite the instance of the uh, it really is Have you ever taken a Filipina to a restaurant and gotten the wrong food brought to the table? I bet you have, because it happens a lot. She ordered the shrimp, but they gave her the sushi, which she's never had before and doesn't want. But instead of saying, Excuse me, sir, I ordered shrimp. Many Filipinas will just say, Oh, it's no big deal. I'll just eat what they brought. To you, that attitude seems ridiculous. You should get what you ordered, and you certainly shouldn't have to pay for the food you don't want. But if you push the issue, there's a good chance that you'll end up looking like the bad guy, both to your embarrassed date and to the waiter, who has to pay for his mistake out of his own wages. It makes you angry to see your partner sitting there with a plate full of unwanted food that you're probably paying for, but she might urge you to just let it pass. And here's another example you might have witnessed firsthand. Ever been standing in line at a checkout and had some guy just pop up out of the blue and blatantly caught in line right in plain sight of all the people waiting their turn? You're expecting someone to say something, but everyone around you just looks down at their feet or suddenly becomes interested in a display that's advertising a buy one, get one on toothpaste. Anything to pretend that they didn't see what you know you all just saw. So what's up with that? Well, if you're in the Philippines long enough, you're gonna see stuff like this happen all the time and wonder why we put up with it. Why do we have such an aversion to even the most minor of confrontations to the point where we even have trouble saying the word no? Well, the answer lies in several different cultural values that affect a Filipino's behavior. And when you combine them all together, they explain a lot about why we do the things we do. Many Asian cultures have varying levels of the concepts I'm about to talk about. But since I deal with the Philippines, I'm just going to explain the way things work here. The first one I want to mention is called hiya, which is translated hiya. as shame or embarrassment. Being publicly shamed is about the worst thing you can do to a Filipino, so we avoid it at all costs. The phrase walang hiya means shameless, and it's a serious insult. One way to prevent shame is to keep your head down and don't become involved in anything that causes a public spectacle, such as complaining or making yourself the center of attention. Yeah. It has the effect of making people not want to be noticed and to keep silent in order to promote social harmony. Which ties in with the next Filipino value called pakikisama, which means getting along with others. Yeah. Having group yeah. unity yeah. is very important here, and anyone that sticks out is seen as a disruption in the force, which causes shame. If your neighbors are partying loudly at 3 a.m., Pakikisama dictates that you don't tell him to knock it off because even though it's them causing the problem, you'll be seen as the unreasonable party pooper. With Pakikisama, personal interaction should be smooth and without conflict. So even when you think someone might not be completely honest with you, you're not supposed to call them out on it. You're expected to just smile and nod your head in agreement because if you expose someone's deception, or accuse someone of something, or cause them to be shamed, then you violated yet another cultural taboo by making them lose face. Filipinos care very much what other people think, 
which might be one of the reasons why we have such strict laws about shaming people in public by defaming their reputation. Your honor is what's important. Image and status are paramount here. So to preserve social peace, Filipinos will go to extremes to avoid any bumps in the road, even when those bumps are actually boulders that need to be removed. I know a lot of this sounds unreasonable and can end up letting people avoid taking responsibility for their actions, but that's the way it sometimes yeah, is here. I'm not justifying it, I'm just explaining it, so that when you get here, you'll understand behavior that frustrates you and probably goes against your idea of fairness. And if all this wasn't enough, you still have to factor in a very important idea in Filipino culture, which is that elders or people who are in a position of authority always have to be deferred to. The mm. words po and opo are used with someone who's perceived oh, to be superior oh, oh. to you, either simply because they're older or because they're in a higher position. They're supposed to be listened to and given respect, even when you don't think they particularly deserve it. It's no wonder then that Filipino parents exert a huge amount of control over their kids, whether that's a good thing or a bad. And my parents were no exception. We were expected to be seen but not heard, and there was no dissension allowed. When I was little, I remember being amazed to watch Western TV shows where the kids were allowed to talk back to their parents. I thought, it couldn't be real. And it was just well, an exaggeration. But now that I'm older, I see how differently kids. Western kids are raised. The culture of how Your kids are taught that their opinions matter, and you're more likely to encourage them to question things and ask you about whatever they don't understand. You often discuss topics like sex and explain how the world works, but not so much here. You'll notice that even older Filipino kids in their teens can be very shy and uncommunicative and they sometimes hide behind their parents instead of speaking for themselves. In the West, children that are talkative and precocious sometimes get movie deals and TV commercials, but here, that same child might get the back of his parents' hand. Now, I'm not saying that having a nation of smart-ass Bart Simpsons is a good thing, but allowing oh, kids to ask questions and encouraging them to solve problems is a good idea. It makes for a confident child who can solve his own problems and hopefully become a future leader. So now, how does this mix of all these cultural values affect the average Filipino? Well, in my opinion, it runs the risk of creating a herd mentality where we're afraid to be individuals. A society based on obedience and submission where it's expected to fit in, not to stand out. As evidence, Here's an example that perfectly ties all these ideas together. A few decades ago, Southeast Asian airlines were having an alarming number of accidents and fatalities. Was it due to poor maintenance, older planes, or inexperienced crews? Nope. It turns out that the culprit might have been cockpit culture, or the way the pilot interacts with the rest of the flight crew. Because Asian culture respects age and seniority to such a high degree, and discourages people from speaking out. The co-pilots who are supposed to be double-checking the captain were afraid to question his orders, even when they knew he was wrong. There was a situation where the co-pilot's instruments showed a problem with the way the captain was flying, but he was afraid to call attention to it for fear of a confrontation with a superior officer, which would cause the older man hiya or shame and loss of face. It's hard to believe, but the second-in-command of the aircraft would rather sit there in silence than risk upsetting the Pakikisama. The good news is that the problems with cockpit culture have been corrected, and junior officers are encouraged to speak out without fear of upsetting the captain or losing their job. It was the same way in many Asian armies, where commanders in the field were discouraged from acting independently or showing any initiative. This was seen repeatedly in World War II, when the Japanese kept launching attacks that were doomed from the start, because someone up the chain of command ordered it, even though the ranking officer on the front lines could clearly see their battle plans were futile. And it's the same kind of thinking we see today, the belief that we're just a cog in a machine that knows what it's doing, and who are we to question it? Because if we question it, 
will stick out and be noticed. And that's just not our way. We believe our superiors really are superior. It's why employees stand there until being told exactly what to do. It's why things are done the same way over and over again, even when someone dares to suggest a better way. And it's why rules and policies are blindly followed, even when they make no sense. I was at a supermarket the other day. I won't say the name because I don't want to cost them pia by publicly calling them out. But I only had a couple of items in my cart, a dozen eggs and some soy sauce. So I got on the line for smaller purchases marked basket only. When I got to the head of the line and was about to put my items down, I was told I needed to have him in a basket because this line was for baskets only. I kid you not. I actually had to lose my place in line to go trade my cart for a little basket so that I could wait all over again and then take my two items out of the basket and place them in front of the cashier. That's a perfect example of rigidly following a rule without any compassion or any willingness to make a harmless exception. Someone in authority said to do it that way, so that's how it must be done. I know it might be hard for you Westerners who are taught to be independent and take initiative to imagine living this way all the time. But once you understand it, it explains so much about the actions and attitudes of the people here in places like the Philippines. So coming back to the original point, what does this all have to do with the myth of the shy Filipina? Well, it's a myth because we use the word differently than you do. In most Western cultures, being shy is more of an internal thing, like a personality type. But here, being shy is more external, because it's a cultural expectation that we're all supposed to follow. Trying to avoid shame, embarrassment, and ridicule means that we try our best not to do anything that'll make us stick out. So we use the word shy to explain why we don't want to do anything to put us in the spotlight. No one wants to be first. No one wants to be last. Like a school of fish or a flock of birds, the safest course of action is to do exactly what the person next to you is doing. And that might just be the biggest difference of all between East and West. You folks are taught to speak up, speak your mind. And if you see something unfair or something that needs improvement, then you call attention to it. We're the opposite. We're taught to pretend everything's fine, don't make waves, just accept the cards we're dealt, and do what our superiors tell us to do. Now, I'm not here to say what's right or what's wrong, but maybe, just maybe, we can learn a little bit from each other and make mm-hmm. changes for the better. And finally, what about the example of your Filipina jumping up and grabbing that mic and singing so out of tune that it makes your ears bleed? Doesn't that make her stick out? Doesn't her bad performance cause hia or shame? Well, if you remember my example of the flock of birds, you'll see why karaoke is an exception. Everyone here does it, some well and some poorly. But since it's acceptable behavior, it's not really calling attention to yourself, and there's no shame involved, even when there should be. So the next time you hear a Filipina say, I'm shy, now you know what she's talking about. And it does not mean there won't be any passionate pillow talk later on. Well, that's it for today's episode. And thanks for sticking with me through all the deep stuff. I like to think that you watch my channel so you can understand my culture. And that's what I tried to give to you today. Join me again on Tuesday as I bring you something you won't expect. Till then, folks. Just one last thing before you go. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your bartender, listening to your comments and questions, giving you advice when I can, and brewing up some intoxicating content for your enjoyment. The only thing I ask in return is a small tip in the form of a thumbs up on this video, subscribing to my channel, sharing this video with friends, and hitting the notification bell so you know when your next round has been poured. I promise, it'll only take 10 seconds to do, and your tip will make my day. You wouldn't want to shaft your bartender, would you? And for last call, why not enjoy some of my other videos too? See you real soon!
yeah, so basically from what <coughs> my understanding of this is it's more of a a social construct in how people in the Philippines are brought up, obviously like she was saying, the more to be seen and not heard and that if you were to question something out in public, whether it is in a positive or negative manner, it's, it could bring a sort of shame kind of uh, situation. So Philippine people tend to be more avoiding of difficult situations and don't like to obviously be in that sort of situation in public to draw attention to them. So I can sort of understand that to a certain point. But then not all Western people are brought up to be confrontational or to speak their mind. It's more of a personal trait that you tend to sort of pick up the older you, you grow and the more life experience that you have. And yeah, just to definitely give me a bit more of an understanding in how, <laughs> how to deal with my uh, partner. Uh, fiance and, uh, and stuff, so and to be more patient and more understanding, and obviously to be more understanding of the culture there. Yeah, so I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that video. If you like what you see and would like to see more, please don't forget to drop us uh, a like and a comment down below if there's something you would like me to check out, and be sure to smash the subscribe button, hit the notifica notification bell button to not miss a video. And I'll be leaving links down below for this video in its original form and a link to the channel to subscribe. And thank you very much for watching and bye bye for now.